Okay, uh, welcome to the ponds. This is uh, Bream Fishing Bonanza. We're on a big reservoir today. We're going to be using modern tactics. Hopefully we'll catch a few fish. And now we're going to show you some baits and let's get on with it. Okay, the uh, first job is to mix ground bait and pellets. Now, we can do all this first because the idea is we get all this sorted out and then we'll set the tackle up because this is going to take a few minutes to settle down, absorb all the waters, get all the goodness out of it. So today I'm going to be using these sticky pellets, which I absolutely love. And I'm going to be putting this into here. And then the idea is really is to add no more than about a quarter of a pint of water for probably about 30 seconds. So we've got, there's our bag of pellets there. And literally, it's one I prepared earlier with some water. So I'm just gonna pour that water into there, okay? But the idea is we want this to absorb, but also to stay sticky. So as you can see there, it's actually quite a wet mix, but that absorbs quite quickly. And then what I'll do is I'll drain some of that off, but actually I found it easier to add some ground bait to that to absorb that water so we don't lose any of that goodness. So whilst I'm doing that, I'm just stirring it over and you can see it's quite, it's quite wet at this stage. That doesn't matter because we can adjust it. And the whole idea is to create a mix that's great for fishing on the method feeder. So today I'm gonna to be using some Super Crush 50-50 method mix. So I'm gonna take the opportunity to add some of that now. And what I wanna do there, I'm only gonna add a little bit at this stage, because I'm gonna add more water in a minute. I'm gonna add some of this F1 sweet fish meal ground bait as well. And because we're fishing for bream today, they absolutely love fish meals. So at this stage, I've literally only added some, and I'm really just gonna take out the wetness of the water that's left. So what I've got left now is already going to start absorbing. So that's a lot drier than it was a few minutes ago. That's mostly pellets in there, probably two thirds pellets at this stage. And then we can adjust that mixture according to how we want it. Now, I can already feel that starting to go sticky. And if I squeeze it like that, as you can see, that would already squeeze round a method feeder because that's just the stickiness of the three mixtures, particularly the 50-50 method and paste and the two mil sticky pellets. So at this stage, I'm just going to leave that now just to absorb before I add any more ground bait. Okay, so we've uh, left this for about 10 or 15 minutes while we've been tackling up and it's absorbed loads of water and it's still fairly sticky what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a little bit more of the F1 green, which is lovely flavoured sweet ground bait. And I'll probably add a little touch more water. And I don't mind if it's a bit on the dry side because I can always add more water. What I can't do is take the water out. So if I'd put too much water in, I'd have to add more ground bait to absorb the water that's there. So before I add the water, I'm just going to mix that ground bait in together and um they're starting to feel pretty good but a little bit on the dry side see it's starting to break up a bit there so i'm just going to add a little bit more water not too much just a tad and then vigorously go through that just using the tips of your fingers and that feels pretty good you can feel there that, that would make into nice balls but that would also mould nicely around the method feeder, but still break up. Now, if you put it around the method and it falls off, then it's obviously not sticky enough or heavy enough. My plan is to have about a dozen throws just on the feeder with no hook length on, on a clipped up distance that I think there'll be fish at and it's not too deep. I've had a few exploratory chucks and I found an area out there at about 30, 35 yards where I'm getting a count of about 12 on a tight line. 
So I watch the tip and then as it springs back and I'm counting at the same time, that gives me my distance and my depth. When I threw it longer, at about 50 yards, I was getting a count of about 18 to 20. So it's gradually shelving off. So I've decided I'm gonna fish in a comfortable depth, not an extreme one and an easy chuck, throwing it directly into the wind. So let's leave this for a bit, get set up and then we'll get fishing. Okay, so what sort of tackle we're we using today? Well, the most important thing we're using today is a little one ounce 30 gram Dura Method feeder. And as you can see on there, I've got the old uh, chocolate orange bandum. So this here is a size 14 hook to eight pound bottom on a four inch hook length. And it's got a power band pre-tied rig on that one that literally just clips onto the bottom of the take apart bead and then to load the feeder literally we just place a little bit of the pellet and the ground bait in the middle there place the hook in the middle and then put more and more feed over the top of it give it a good pile and then placing it the correct way around literally just press it in like so and then i turn it round and out it comes and then that that is ready to cast so that's great dura method feeder we've got six pound monofilament line and on that i'm using a quorum 11 foot feeder rod and a quorum 4,000 size feeder reel with six pound line on it. And that's as complicated as it gets. This is more than capable of chucking it 50 yards, no problem at all. Sometimes I might use a heavier rod if I was fishing a bigger feeder or further out. But today, the 11 foot rod is absolutely fine. Simple fishing and we have half a dozen chucks to a dozen chucks to get some bait out there before we put a hook bait on. Yeah, perfect day for it today. keeping the rod tip up a little bit here because there's a sort of bit of a ledge sometimes the fish sort of come over and they can get on the ledge another bream but ideal day today southwesterly wind blowing in quite hard overcast bit of sunshine bit of rain in the air absolutely ideal conditions for bream fishing you can catch them on uh, still days but uh, a good lop on the water creates a good toe on the water usually and I think it just sort of wakes them up a bit they like that getting closer to the net now nice family of mallard going by in their summer plumage there he comes yeah another nice bream no rush with bream fishing no rush not trying to get these fish out particularly fast we want them on, stay on the hook, get in the net, and that's usually another two or three pound in the net. There you go, that's a nice old slab. Great stuff. Well, I think marine fishing quite often suits my pace of life. Got a nice uh, big unhooking mat on there just to rest them on to unhook them. See the old wafter in the top of his lip there? Don't mind a bit of that. Pop that one in, that's it. 
wipe my hands, see if we can catch another. cast up to the marker on the reel just pull it back and put the rod tip under the water so we're sinking on a tight line still sinking now still sinking and it's just hit the bottom so now all I need to do now is just make sure the line's tight so there's a couple of turns on the reel to put a little bit of tension in the tip. And the idea of that is that sometimes you'll get a drop back bite rather than a pure pull. So you need a bit of tension there to see if a fish has come towards you. If it has, obviously you pick the rod up now. It's also worth mentioning that with the bream fishing, we don't really want to strike. You more or less just pick the rod up. When you get a nice pull, just pick the rod up and start winding and that's usually, the fish is already on there. Well, like all good days, they got to come to an end sometime. And we've had a fabulous day again today, as usual. Caught plenty of fish, some nice bream, some skimmers. And uh, the baits and the tactics we've shown you have all worked well. And we're going to go home happy men. So I think it's time now to put these ones back and uh, let them go back to where they've come from. Here we go.